The question that, that we're dealing with today in our God questions is why do some people, why are some people so into stuff? Why are some people so into stuff? Now the question was broader than that because the individual was actually asking about some issues in, in their life and wanting, wanting really their daughter to be loved by the in-laws. And the in-laws have kind of ignored their daughter and, it, and it's really hurting. And, and, you know, and, and the challenge is, is that the, the question starts to say, well, why are they into stuff? But then along with that question was, you know, so I need my in-laws to give stuff to my daughter. Do you hear the interesting parallel? We're all into stuff, folks. Here's the real challenge. If you live in America, you're bombarded with stuff every day. Are you aware of the kinds of things that have been, that have been invented since 1990? Before 1990, we were not on the internet. We were not playing games on the internet. We were not doing email on the internet. We were not addicted to the internet. We were not getting um, pornography on the internet. We were not doing all kinds of stuff that takes all kinds of energy. How many of you like junk mail in your email folder? Before 1990, you didn't have to worry about junk mail because the internet did not come to us until 1990 iPods, iPads, all those kinds of things that are so important. How many of you here, just raise your hand, how many of you here have a cell phone? Look around. How did you ever live without them? Because you didn't have cell phones before, what was it, 1994? Okay, yeah. You didn't have cell phones. How did you ever live without them? Okay. We, we, couldn't, we can't survive now without our cell phone. No, we all have to have them. How many of them turned silent? How many of them still turned on? How many of them is going to make a noise if I call you? <laughs> we all have things. We all are focused on stuff. It's not just the people that we think are a little bit selfish. It's not just the people that we think are just thinking about themselves and trying to get rich and so um, determined to have more. Folks... It's us. And here's the challenge. Because we have so much stuff, we worry about our stuff. Incidentally, you now, right now can get um, free security. They'll, they'll, they'll monitor your home. They'll put in the security system for free. All you have to do is pay the monthly fee. That'll take away your anxiety and worry, right? There's three things that are going to come out of this text today. Number one is, the, is probably one of the most important passages that, that in just in a single verse tries to give us focus for life. And it's in verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Stephen Coble says that, that there's a large overarching command. Be passionate about experiencing the saving, purifying, empowering, love-producing reign of God in your life and over all the world. The kingdom come is my life and over the nations. We want the kingdom of God to come. To seek first his kingdom, to seek first him, is to put him first. And folks, when, Paul, when Jesus is saying that, he's not saying first in a list of a hundred other things. He's really saying put him as one and only thing that you're going to seek. You see, to seek first the kingdom of God means to actually become a slave of Jesus Christ. Yes, a slave, that's that nasty term, right? But a slave meant you were owned by the other person 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 366 days a year. You were owned by that other person. That master could call on you on any moment and you had to respond. You could not serve more than one slave master, could you? Now, your master could send you over to your neighbors and you can help doing the, do the wheat work there or something else in the fields or something like that, but you still belong to that master. You were there because your master sent you. See, we're in a world where we're trying to serve all kinds of masters. All of us. All kinds of things crying at us. What did Michelle say? One of the reasons why they sold the house and, and got rid of some of the debt. Why? Because they didn't want to be a slave to that, really. And yet we're all vulnerable to it. There's things that we become slaves to. The second thing that this message is about is to lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. 
It comes in the first part of the text. I originally wasn't going to include it, and yet I had to include verse 24, so then you got to include back to 19. In fact, let's just pause for a moment and hear the word of God. I'm reading from verse 19 of Matthew chapter 6. <laughs> I love it how some people say, this is the red letter section of the book. That means it's really important. <laughs> okay. The red letter section is the stuff that Jesus spoke. So that makes this really important. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad... Your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You see, just pause there for a moment. We're trying to. It's the struggle we have And my goodness, it gets worse if you've got debt. It gets worse yet if you're behind on that debt and you don't have enough to pay the bills. Talk about really the pain and the agony and the slavery and the bondage and you start to despise that phone, right? And so you just don't answer it. And you you just don't don't let them talk to you because they don't come to your door until it's time to take the house away. So we just try to look at, we're in a struggle, a battle. And it's incidentally, somebody said once, the reason why people don't like it when preachers preach about money is because none of us like to have our God be attacked. Do you know Jesus spoke more about money than he did almost any other subject? Hmm. Do you know that Jesus also attacked the small gods? And even the religious people who thought they were acting godly by all of their ritual. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. So does Debbie and anyone else who has a bird feeder outside their house. (laughs) Who, Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. So what should we do instead of worrying? But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Seek first the kingdom of God is the first statement that this passage is all about. Secondly, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy. You know, folks, I don't know, but they got enough gold on the streets. You don't need to send gold to heaven. Okay, and I don't know how you're going to get it there anyways. The only thing I know that you can send from this world to the next is people. Are you letting that sink in? The only treasure we can send to heaven is what Kurt was talking about in the song, Go and Make Disciples of All Nations. Go into all the world. Share the love of Jesus Christ with other people. That's how you store up treasure in heaven. It's it's by people that you place there. And the third thing this text is all about is don't worry. (sighs) 
in one note I saw it, re, worry was referred to as an addiction to earth treasure. Hmm. And we need to break free from that addiction and give ourselves with passion to heaven treasure. By faith in his promises, God frees us from anxiety and in this freedom, we don't crave treasure on earth anymore. Well, those are the three main things. I said earlier, we're all into stuff. We all have a lot of things. I, I used this illustration before. I love what James Dobson said when he bought the swing set for his child at Christmas time and he had to put it all together and it took him all night long and he finally got it together and he read the note at the end of the instructions that says, now you need to come back and retighten the books, the bolts and everything on here every week and in fact, you need to have a monthly plan for retightening all the nuts and bolts and screws on the swing set. And he said, oh no, well, your possessions own you. <clears throat> what does Jesus say here? He says, do not worry. He puts it in three different verses. I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? In verse 34, he says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble. He's saying, look, you got enough stuff to deal with today. Why are you worrying about tomorrow's stuff? First of all, you can't do anything about the worries tomorrow, but today's where you're living. You've got to deal with this stuff today. And in verse 27, he says, can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Yeah, I mean, even if you're worried about, it, okay, you're getting ready to go to the doctor and you're worried about what the doctor's going to tell you and all, is worry going to add any more time to your existence? Not at all. Not at all. Seek first, he says, the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and these things will be added unto you. R.C. Sproul explains, seeking demands an intensity, a perseverance that will not be denied and a zeal to achieve the desired objective. Have you ever had an anxiety attack? An anxiety attack is something like the opposite of seeking the, for the kingdom of heaven. And what, what Sproul's saying here is he tries to define seeking. An anxiety attack takes a hold of you. Have you noticed it? And it, it may cause intense physical reaction. The body starts literally churning and the heart's racing. And, and, and you, it's almost like, you know, I just got to get out of here. It can be so intense. Well, it's interesting, that's, that's really the intensity we want to switch and have towards God, seeking first his kingdom. There's some instructions that the word of God has for us on, on even dealing with anxiety attacks. H have you thought about the fact that God wants to give you joy? Even maybe in the middle of whatever anxiety you might be facing. God wants to give you a peace that goes beyond understanding. And so what does the word of God say? It says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares about you. And what that means is, okay, you, you may be in the middle of that anxiety attack. I'm afraid of something. I'm really wrestling with something. And what's he saying? Throw it on Jesus, literally. Here it is, Jesus. I've got to humble myself. I can't not face this alone. Here it is, God. I, and here's the sad thing is too often anxiety attacks come because there's been some deep pain that's occurred in someone's life. Something that they're, that's coming up again, something they're struggling with. And Jesus is simply saying, stop thinking on that and cast it over onto me. It's, it's, it's what he says <clears throat> in Philippians 4, do not be anxious about anything. Well, that's easier said for you than it is for me. Do not be anxious about anything. And what he's saying there is don't hang on to your anxiety about anything, but instead, here's what he tells you to do in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. God, this is what I'm facing. This is what I'm nervous about. This is what I'm worrying about. I give it over to you. Amen. Here it is, God. And I'm going to cry it out to you with prayer. I'm going to cry it out with petition. Meaning, I'm not just going to talk it. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to literally break, let my heart break open in front of you. And I'm going to progress. This is, what I, this is what I want. This is how I want to try to deal with this, God. I don't know. I need your help. And the peace of God, this is what we want. And the peace of God that goes beyond, that transcends understanding, will do what? Will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Folks, there is a battle that's going on when we're worrying that's in our mind. 
It's why we're also told we're supposed to take every thought captive in first, second Peter, excuse me, second Corinthians. Take every thought captive to Jesus Christ. You have a thought that's starting to cause deep worry and anxiety and you literally need to imprison it inside of Jesus Christ. Here it is, Jesus. This is the thought. I need to give it over to you. Stuff is going to happen. Stuff will happen to us. Sometimes bad stuff, painful stuff. And because stuff will happen, <laughs> deal with the stuff that's happening today. Okay? Don't try to also take care of stuff that's happening tomorrow. It's Deuteronomy 4.29 says, but if there you seek the Lord your God, and this is talking about the children of Israel when they're in exile, in exile. They're off away. They don't have a place to worship God. They're slaves. And he says, while you're out there in that slavery, when you're in bondage, when you're in the tough, tough place, that's the moment to seek the Lord your God. And when you seek him, if you will seek him with all your heart, you will find him. The heart and the mind have to work together on this, don't they? Pastor Ray Pritchard offers this advice on seeking. He says, everyone seeks something. We are all, by nature, seeking people. Some people seek for money, others for fame, others for pleasure, others for self-validation, others for sexual fulfillment, and others for worldly power. We may seek a husband or a wife, or we may seek children, or a new job, or a better education, or a new home, or new friends, or a new church. The tragedy of our time is that so many people are wasting their lives chasing after three things that can never satisfy money, sex, and power. We want money, so we sacrifice our families to get it. We want sex, so we sacrifice our morals to get it. Young adults, you're some of the most vulnerable to that. We want power, so we sacrifice our friends to get it. There's the middle professional who thinks, I just got to keep getting ahead and got to keep moving up. We got to make more. I got to put more in the retirement, whatever it might be. And when we finally get it, it does not satisfy. Tony and I are going to try to help you visualize something before we go to communion. And I apologize because I'm going to play the part of God. And uh, I, none of us can do that. And Tony's going to play himself. And this is a con. <laughs> yeah, impossible to do. <laughs> so, um, so Tony's uh, Tony's gonna start off with. A, is it turned on? Okay. To- no. Okay. Tony's gonna start off with a prayer, and um, please ignore the fact that the voice sounds like Bill. <laughs> Here, join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for, gosh, just for all the blessings and things that that you've given me, Lord. I just, I just want to thank you over the years. And, You're welcome. And, uh, ooh. And, and Lord, you know, I, it, my truest of heart wants to really seek your, you first. That's I, good. I, I want to seek you first, Lord. And, good. And thank you for all those things, too, that, that in, enable me to seek your face and be able to give it, give it all up for you. Lord, I just thank you in Jesus' name. So, Tony... You want to give a, it all up to me. A. Tony, you want to give it all up to me. Yes. Yeah, I, I thank you. I, I'm saying thank you for You're, blessing me with all those things. Oh, oh, it's been a joy to give me. it all to you. Thank you. But you say you want to give it all up to me. You want to yes, really I want to see. I definitely I want to seek your kingdom. Lord. You want to seek my kingdom. You yes, want to I seek do. it first? Yes, first. Good. Seek you, first the kingdom of God. Good. Tony, what do you have? What do I have? Yeah, what do you have? Everything that you've given me, Lord. <laughs> you, I have all those things. It's, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. What do you have, Tony, that I've given you? You mean like right now? Yeah, right now. What do you have, Tony? I have a house. and Really? Um, a house? Yeah, it's, it's over there, though. Is it, does, it have a, does it have a debt on it? Um, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, well, I'll does. take the house. Okay, okay. Is it a good house? Uh, it's okay. It's okay. 55 is kind of old like me, but next thing. It's okay. What what else do you have there, Tony? I well, see a lot of things you have. On me, I, I I have, you know, a watch. I'll take your watch, thank you. My watch? Yeah. I won't know when the pastor wants me to come back up here. Thank again. you, I'll take your watch. Okay. What okay. else do you have, Tony? I I have my Good. glasses. I'll take but I won't be glasses. able to see the thank music. You, Tony. Good thing Kurt's here. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. 
Uh, what else do you have, Tony? I have, I have my wallet. I'll with take my your wallet. Credit Thank you. Cards and credit cards. You don't need that cards. many ways. You just need to trust me. And I don't. I don't. What else do you have, Tony? <laughs> Well, it's getting a little. I have my shirt. This, I'll take your this. shirt, Tony. Thank you. Sure. Hawaiian, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I think I, of I've you. I've been told Hawaiian's out, but whatever. It, it is. I was going retro today. I thought I was. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Tony. What else do you have? You know, I think the only thing other than my name tag is. I'll um, take your name tag, Tony. Thank you. <laughs> no, I won't even know who I am. <laughs> what else do you have, Tony? The only thing I have left is, God, it's me. You know, you have something else, Tony. Your phone. <gasps> oh, <laughs> who said that? <laughs> Lord, I just didn't want to give that one up. It's only been 20 years I've had one of those. Tony, <laughs> I, I thank you. Thank you for the phone. But, you know, Tony, I was looking in here, and I, I don't see any pictures, but I'm aware that you've had a lot of prayer about some people. I have, I... So what else do you have, Tony? I have my kids, my children, my grandson. I'll take your children and your grandson. What else do you have, Tony? I have my wife. I'll take Corinne. She's beautiful. I'll take her. <laughs> Lord, I have, I have nothing, nothing left. I have nothing else. Nothing else, Tony? Well, I have, that's, that's all I have to give. What else do you have, Tony? There's something else you have. My heart. I'll take your heart, Tony. Tony, don't need a name tag. You know, they forget who I am. They, and, they, and lots of people call me by all kinds of names. But don't need a name tag. You know, and um, day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day, and this watch does not cover that. So I don't, yes, I don't need the watch. It's true. But, it's but, true. But, but Tony. It's missing some things. Tony, I want you to remember something. This is my watch. I want you now to use it for me. Amen. Okay. Tony, um, Amen. yeah, Hawaiian. <laughs> <laughs> Retro. It's a beautiful shirt, and I'm glad I gave it to you so long ago. But um, <laughs> Trade it in. I, I want you to wear Daryl gave it to me, see? <laughs> Tony, I want you to wear this shirt, but I want you to remember it's mine, and I want you to use it for my glory. So everything is... Tony, cell phones... You, got, you, you don't realize how, how fast I can communicate and how much I can listen to, and I don't need a cell phone to do that. So I'm going to give you your cell phone back, but I want you to remember, this is mine, and I want you to use it for me. Your wallet? Yeah, I don't want the debt. <laughs> um, but, Tony, your credit cards, your identity, your driver's license, all that, I want you to remember, this is mine. I want you to use this for my glory. You're right, I gave you your children, I gave you your grandson, I gave you your wife. I gave them to you to take care of, to be a good steward of. I'm going to give them back to you, but I want you to remember they're mine. Use them for me and for my glory. And Tony, it's your heart that I've always wanted. Now live for me. Let's pray. God. I lost your glasses, Tony. <laughs> All the stuff, God, is so easy to let it get in the way as we come to communion today, Jesus. This bread reminds us that you gave up everything. The song says that you left the splendor of heaven, knowing that your destiny was that lonely hill of Golgotha. There to, to lay down your life for me. Jesus, thank you for your body that you allowed to be broken for us. Cleanse and forgive us. The cup is a symbol of a brand new covenant. 
bought and paid for with your blood. It gives us the freedom to enter the Holy of Holies whenever we want to. Bless this cup. Let it remind us of your gift. And may all of what we've done here today remind us, Lord, to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen.